The first query is selecting employees whose salary is greater than 75,000 and the second query is selecting those employees whose hire date is less than January 2018. Combining these two queries with a union all operation and executing the queries is going to give us a total of eight records. We can see that there are some duplicate records, for example, for employee ID 3 because his salary is greater than 75,000 and also his hire date is less than January 2018. On the other hand, if we replace this operation by a union operation and execute, we get a total of five records in which we get a distinct record for each employee ID even if he satisfies both the conditions. If the requirement is to get distinct records in the output, we need to use a union operation. But if we are certain that there can be no duplicate records in the two queries that we are trying to combine, then you can easily use a union all operation. For example, in this case, no same employee can have a salary greater than 75,000 and at the same time a salary less than 50,000. So in this case, we are sure that the output will have distinct employee IDs and it is better to use a union all because it will not be performing the additional operation of identifying distinct records which is going to impact the performance. So use union all when you are not concerned about duplicate records in the output or are sure that the two queries are not going to give you overlapping records. But in cases where you need distinct records and the queries might give you overlapping records, use a union operation. Both delete and truncate statements will delete the data from your table. With delete statement, you can specify a where clause which can help you filter out the records you want to delete. For example, you can write a statement like delete from your table where ID is greater than 2 and this will only delete the records where the ID is greater than 2. The truncate table statement does not allow you to specify a where clause. So when you run the truncate table command, it is going to delete all the data from your table. So if you now do a select from your table, you're going to get zero records or no records from the table. So it does not drop the table. It does not drop the table structure. It just deletes the data from the table. With the delete command, you can actually roll back the transaction if you are do performing your delete command within a transaction. So I'm going to write a begin transaction statement. And in my transaction, I'm going to delete the data from the table with this condition on it. So I'm going to execute this query. And then I'm going to say, okay, I'm going to do a select from the table so you can see that there is no ID and uh, no record with the ID greater than 2 and and now I'm going to do a rollback transaction and it will help me restore the deleted record so if I do a select start from test again you will see that the record that we just deleted using this query has been rolled back so when you execute a delete statement you have the ability to roll back so if you mistakenly delete then you have that ability to roll back your transaction but this also means that your transaction log is of a bigger size because delete records delete will delete the records row by row so every row that is deleted creates an entry in the transaction log whereas the Truncate command does not create an entry for every row. It creates an entry for the pages because it disallocates the pages. So it takes minimum space in the transaction log as compared to a delete statement. So if you're really not concerned about rolling back a transaction and that is not as per your requirement, you can and you just need to delete the data from the whole table, you can go for the truncate statement. It will be much faster and it will not take up as much space in the transaction log. But if you need to delete as per some criteria, so you need to specify some conditions, then you have to go for the delete statement. Also, if you want that ability to roll back the transaction and retrieve the data that you by mistake you might have deleted, then you have to go for the delete statement.